Hey everybody, welcome to String em Up. I may get into a little bit of semantic trouble for this video, but I'm prepared for it. And that being said, I hope this video more than anything invites a vigorous debate and conversation concerning our only truly American art form. So please comment, but uh, let's keep it civil. Now, as guitarists, we hear a lot of talk about the blues, and with good reason. It's the cornerstone of all American post-Civil War popular music. So jazz, bluegrass, rock and roll, gospel, ragtime, boogie woogie, country, and even hard rock and metal all have their roots in the blues. So what is blues? Well, that's kind of a tough question because it might not be what we think it is. Now, before we go any further, I want to clarify that this video won't be a musicological treatise on the history, background, and development of the blues, nor will it be an aesthetic study of the blues, you know, the emotion, the power, and the message. This will be more of an analytical discussion on the structure or the form of the blues progression. And hopefully it'll also work as a tutorial for new players who want to jump in, but just don't know where to start. Let's talk about the 12 bar blues form. So what is blues? Well, let's begin by defining what it's not, and here's where the trouble's gonna start. Blues is not a style of music. There, I said it. So let that sink in for a second. Now, I can already tell what my first batch of hate mail will be. Well, I've been a blues player for 50 years, don't tell me it's not a style. Or, well, last time I went to iTunes or Spotify, I looked up blues and there was a category for it. But hear me out on this. Let's compare two blues musicians, Sun House and Albert Collins. Both are well-known blues players, and do they sound alike? Well, not even remotely. So if we want to clarify what each artist sounds like for somebody who's never heard them, we have a tendency to add descriptive labels. So things like, oh, Sun House is primitive Delta preaching blues, and Albert Collins is Chicago blues. Or you might hear Stevie Ray Vaughan is Texas blues, and Peter Green is British blues. And think of all the blues qualifiers that you've ever heard, and we've heard them all. Rockin' blues, psychedelic blues, Memphis blues, jump blues, um, boogie woogie, country blues, uptown blues, and you can even insert the name of a city or a state, blues. And each one denotes or suggests a different flavor or variation of blues. So then isn't it reasonable to assume that the blues portion of the label denotes an underlying musical structure or foundation, and the descriptor actually indicates the style? Now, I've spent a long time contemplating this idea, and I think for the most part, I'm pretty justified in my conclusion that there is no style of music called blues. But there is a structure which underlies nearly all of these stylistic variations, and it is blues, the 12 bar blues form. Let's check it out. Now, before we go any further, we'll be discussing primary chords. Now, in episode five, my practical theory video, I detail the primary or the one, the four, and the five chords in major keys. So if you're not familiar with the primaries, go check it out real quick and join me back here. Now, what exactly is this blue structure? Well, as the name suggests, its form is 12 measures or 12 bars long, and it usually follows a regular sequence of chord changes which look like this. We have a one, two, a four, two, a one, another one, and then we get a four, a four, a one, a one, then we get a five, a four, a one, and then a five. And notice this is what we call an open form because it repeats. Now, there are variations in this form. Sometimes we stay on the one chord in bar two. And sometimes we stay on the five chord in bar 10. And sometimes we stay on the one chord in bar 12. And I've even encountered some blues forms um, which start on the four chord. And there are even much more crazier variations, especially when you get into jazz. But what's written on the board is pretty much the standard form. Now, if we substitute chords in for the numbers like we did in the last video, we can automatically play through this chord progression in as many keys as we know chords for. 
So here's an example in the key of A. Remember, A is 1, B, C. D is 4, E is 5. Follow along on the chart. First thing you should notice is how familiar this sounds. You should also notice that, and this is because it is so familiar, you can either predict or pre-hear or even feel the next chord in the sequence and use this to your advantage as a way to check and or correct your ability to execute and memorize these chords within the blues progression. Here's a basic example in the key of G. So G is 1, C is 4, D is 5. Now, one more just so you get a, a feel for, for things. Uh, here's one in the key of E, and I'm going to play this in a swing rhythm this time. And uh, you really should notice something really familiar happening with this. So E is 1, um, so E, G sharp, A is 4, B is 5. Remember, earlier in the conversation, we differentiated between style and structure. Now, concerning how to interpret or execute the blues, well, this is where style comes into play. And we've already learned the structure, so now let's take a quick look at a few of the different styles. Now, a little later, I do plan on doing individual videos detailing each of these styles, so this is actually just a style profile, and it's intended to show that even though each style sounds different, you should be able to hear a common thread the chord progression or the sequence running through all of the examples. So for this stylistic profile, I'm going to play all of the examples in the key of A. And the first style is what we call Boogie Woogie or Barrel House. And this is usually what we think of when we think of the stereotypical blues style. <laughs> Generally, when we think of early rock and roll, it's pretty much the same thing as Boogie Woogie or uh, Barrel House, except it's in a straight rhythm. So when we think about early jazz or swing music, we tend to hear something that sounds about like this. Sorry about all the string squeaks. Yeah. 
So here is a blues in a bluegrass style. This is also in the key of A. Notice I'll be playing in the key of G, but I'm capoed at two, which results in the key of A. So bluegrass uh, style blues. And notice, again, the thing that runs through all of these examples is this sequence of chords. Only the style has changed, therefore blues, we find out, is actually a structure. Now, this means that all the different styles, ultimately, whether it's Chicago blues, Texas blues, um, uh, Memphis blues, they're all blues. So, we actually come back to where we started. So as a parting thought, I'd like to leave you with a short list of popular tunes, and by popular we just mean rock, folk, country, pop, etc. Um, songs that are blues structures, and uh, they include Freddie Freeloader by Miles Davis, Billy's Bounce by Charlie Parker, a bebop tune, Johnny Be Good, the first rock and roll song by Chuck Berry, Crossroads by Cream, Red House by Jimi Hendrix, and even Working Man Blues by Merle Haggard. And then there are a few songs whose blues structures may not be so obvious. Call Me the Breeze by Leonard Skinner. It's actually a 24 bar blues, and that just means double the number of measures on each chord. Um, Rock and Roll by Led Zeppelin. The verses are also a 24 bar blues. Um, there's Blue Telescope by John Hyatt. And most interestingly, and I dare all of you to check it out, the chorus is to come out and play by one of my favorite K pop groups, Tiny G. Thanks for watching String Em Up. My name is David Holland, and remember to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Also, feel free to leave comments and suggestions for any topics you'd like to see in future episodes. Have fun, stay safe, and start getting to sleep early. School starts soon. See you next time. Bye.